<clears throat> and uh, also remember, um, since the community center is um, um, owned. owned by the community, the borough, the borough Turboville, um, they are not allowing us in there until we go green. And so, uh, and so that puts a stop to our service on Sunday. And uh, I'm not sure when Northumberland County is going to be going green, um, but uh, <clears throat> we need to pray about this. And and uh, but we're 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 going to go. We're going to be fine. We're going to be all right. Yeah. You're doing all right. Everybody's doing all right. Um, this is some of the things we're going to talk about tonight. In this, uh, being an encourager during these times of discouragement. Uh, this is a time when depression can really let loose on people. They're, you know, shut in. They're, they're not really getting, they're not sh socializing. Uh, this is why it is, it is good that you stay connected with the body of Christ. Uh, it's just not my job, uh, but it's everyone else's job uh, to stay connected with one another. So Amen. if there's anybody that, you know, Part of our New Life Worship Center. Uh, please um, don't hesitate to call. Don't hesitate to send a card. Or uh, I think it's good to call first. Me personally, I'm I'm the call type person. I rather call instead of text. Uh, I, I like to hear a voice on the other end. That way, I know how they're feeling because you can text certain words and you don't know how they're feeling. And uh, but you maybe see it in their sentence uh, how they're you know laying out their their sentence, but uh, I'd rather talk to somebody. So uh, give a give a call to someone this week, uh, over the next couple of weeks, uh, and uh, just check on people uh, during this time that we are facing. And uh, it's crazy. It's it's a messed up world, and uh, the Bible shows us that in the last days uh, there's going to be perilous times, and uh, this should not take the church by surprise. Right. Uh, but we should be aware, uh, aware of our surroundings, aware of our relationship with the Lord and know that uh, uh, everything's going to work out. Um, in the end, uh, the Lord has the final say. So uh, right. and I know I, I've seen a lot of posts, a lot of rumors uh, that's, you know, come to pass and prophecies and so forth. And uh I'm not too much into that doomsday uh, type speaking or teaching. Um, I enjoy listening to someone that can, you know, really lay some things out. Um, but anyways, we're going to move on tonight on being an encourager. Uh, I want us to look at uh, First uh, Thessalonians chapter five. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll start at verse eleven. Uh, uh, in this tonight. <clears throat> now you got to understand that. Remember now, uh, these churches, um, these letters uh, that are that are being written to the uh, churches here, the epistles are, are churches, and uh, they've been established now and uh, for several years. And Paul is writing letters, and he's encouraging the churches. And, uh, and here he states, wherefore, comfort yourselves together, edify one another, okay, even as also ye do. So <clears throat> hear me, and I, I'm, not, I'm not condemning anybody, I'm not, uh, but I want us to get out of the mindset, well, it's the pastor's job, it's the leadership job that, to call everybody, check in on everybody. Well, here it is, the body of Christ, that we need to comfort yourselves together, edify one another. So, it's my job as a member of New Life Worship Center to edify other brothers and sisters in the church, other people, visitors that have come to the church. It is my job, it is my responsibility as um, um, a saint of God. Uh, because okay, we'll we'll move on because I'll, I'll get I'll get off chasing a rabbit. But down to verse uh, uh, fourteen, 
says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient towards all men. And, and, and that's hard at times. It really is. But we need the support. We need the comfort. Uh, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but every but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Praise God. So, <clears throat> here we are. I want us to look at being a encourager. Um, not to get into a, a, a lengthy discourse on script with scripture, um, but we know that the gifts of the spirit, uh, we know that they are uh, in us, that when we have the gift of the Holy Ghost, uh, we have the gifts of the spirit. Um, they are evident in our lives. And uh, they are, you know, they are there to not only equip us and to help us, um, but I believe that they are there to help others. Um, I was uh, very encouraged the other day. Um, uh, Brother Coon was online and, uh, and he had a he has a session that he does. And uh, he was um, talking about uh, the needs and ministering to needs and. Uh, he was uh, uh, emphasizing about the church and what the church, you know, is like an in, in, uh, emergency room. It's, it's going to be bloody at times, not physically, but spiritually. Um, and, and I thought, wow, he's, he's really hit the nail on the head for me. He has really confirmed what I feel about our church at New Life Worship Center is that we are a, a, a uh, emergency room. And God has placed us here. God has placed you at New Life Worship Center. God has placed you among us and with us, with your abilities, with your ideas, with your helps, with your gifts. Because not only do we have the fruit of the Spirit, but we have the gifts of the Spirit. And we uh, operate in those gifts. And uh, just like in an emergency room, uh, it takes various people to run that emergency room uh, efficiently. It takes a doctor, it takes nurses, it takes uh, other technicians to come in and, and to work on the patient, to get the vital signs, to, you know, other things that, that, ta that take place. Uh, they are there for one reason, and that is to get that patient healthy so that they can go back home. And so they're going to do everything to, with their knowledge, with their ability to work on that patient. And here we are uh, in the time in which we live, and I feel as New Life Worship Center uh, with Luke 418, healing the brokenhearted, opening the blinded eyes, uh, setting the captive free. Other scriptures come to my mind of where the Lord, you know, sent out those two by two and they ministered. Um, the Lord is, is wanting us as a body, as New Life Worship Center, um, to... Uh, Roll up our shirt sleeves, okay? I got mine rolled up here tonight. Roll up our shirt sleeves and get involved with the mess of the world, okay? It's just just plain and simple. Uh, people's lives are a mess right now, and uh, they, they are going to come to us uh, from different walks of life, from different avenues, from different areas, and uh, they're going to be a mess. Uh, but we're going to we're going to help them. We're going to encourage them. And I'm going to encourage you tonight. Hopefully I'm going to help us tonight, um, myself included, uh, to understand uh, my place as an encourager. Uh, the key to encouragement is knowing what gives people courage. OK, uh, what spurs them on? Uh, it's like dangling that carrot out in front of that 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 animal to get him to move and to show him that hey, if you could just reach that carrot, um, you're going to be rewarded. Well, uh, that makes him pull a load. That makes him go places that he probably wouldn't go normally. But that carrot is out in front of him, and uh, I believe the Lord is leading us if we allow ourselves to take that step of faith. Uh, if we step out of our traditional boxes that we have ourselves in, 
of uh, and allow ourselves to minister, allow ourselves to be used of him as instruments of righteousness, the Bible says, and vessels of honor, uh, the Bible shows us that the Lord is going to use us to help with uh, with those that are hurting, yeah. uh, those that are despondent, uh, those that are just got sin just so wrapped up in, in, in their lives that, man, they don't know which way is up. They don't know which way to go. And they don't know who to turn to, who to talk to. And, mm -hmm. and it just mm -hmm. seems like everything in their lives just falling apart. Uh, we need to find and be that person to spur them on. Many of us take pleasure. Now, I'm not saying us as New Life Worship Center, uh, but there are people in our world today that take pleasure in discouraging people by pointing out their mistakes. First and foremost, they'll, as soon as somebody comes to them with, with an issue, they'll well, right away, they'll point out their mistake. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> and that's, and, you know, they'll, 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 you know, look at their failures. Look at their faults. Uh, instead of focusing on their strengths and getting excited about their possibilities, uh, that's one of the things that that I have looked at and uh, I have paid attention to. Uh, and, and maybe this is just the Lord how the Lord is, is is working with me and helping me to understand our place uh, in in uh, in the time in which we live is. Is when I see someone come in the church and I know that they have issues in their life. I know that they're coming from broken areas and uh, messed up backgrounds. Uh, I first and foremost, I think, man, what an awesome opportunity if they could turn around that experience that they are going through right now and use it for the Lord. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. And, and I think that's where the Lord wants to uh, get our mindset changed to the point that when we look at those that come in out of a world of sin, uh, we don't see all the stuff that is going on in their lives, all the addictions and, you know, and, and the smells and everything that, you know, that might catch us. But, but we'll look at them spiritually and see, man, what a vessel they could be used of God. What an instrument they could be used of God. Because if they could get their, themselves, and I'm getting ahead of myself, they could get themselves right with God and, and turn things around uh, and, and then use this experience of how that they turn their lives around, how that they then can help yeah. others yeah. through the work of yeah. God. Right. And so let's get excited about the possibilities. Let's get excited about the strengths of people, not their weaknesses, not their faults. Um, and, and they're going to have, we, people are going to have faults no matter where we go. And, uh, and, and I just want to say that, you know, encouragement, uh, really goes a long ways. And, um, it's not necessarily you being their cheerleader all the time, but there are times when it's just you being there, mm -hmm. uh, just a phone call. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? How, you know, everything okay today? And, you know, just just small talk uh, is is something. I, I can remember when we were uh, facing some of the issues that we have faced and uh, didn't really know where we were walking. I mean, it seemed like we were just walking in a wilderness type experience. And uh, we just felt the Lord leading us in this direction. And uh, I contacted then the uh, our NAM director for the state of Pennsylvania. And he didn't really say yay or nay, but hey, why don't you come along? And and we went to a couple meetings, a couple uh, sessions. Uh, and it was just those times of encouragement, not really saying, hey, yeah, you need to do this. But hey, it's an opportunity. It's there. And that's all we can do. Uh, we can open the door, but it's, it's people to change their minds uh, for them to walk through the door. I can't push them through. I can't right. pull them through. I can only open the door and encourage them to walk through and take the step of faith. Right. So <clears throat> the other thing about encouraging is um, you get the kind of behavior that you reward. Uh, let me kind of say this, that you get the behavior that you most 
talk about. So somebody comes in and, you know, and, and we know that maybe they've been out partying and we know they're a partier and or whatever. We, we, we know they got issues and we focus on that issues. That's all they're going to think about. You know, they're not even going to think about trying to get better uh, because everyone's, you know, this person keeps or these people keep on putting them down. And I, 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 I look at Jesus and, and his ministry and and if we try to be like jesus and that's what i i want you to be as new life worship center saints of god as members of new life worship center be followers of jesus don't be followers of me i want that to sink in <clears throat> don't be followers of me i want you to follow after jesus christ follow after him and get a relationship with him and see where he when when you know the woman at the well. Right. I mean, he didn't. He, he yeah, okay, yeah. He said, hey, you know the what the husband you're with is not your, you know, it's you you've had a few, but he didn't he didn't dwell on that. He gave her an opportunity to be saved, to to taste of 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 living water, right. you know. Yeah. Um, and so the kind of behavior we reward is the kind of behavior we're, we're going to get. Uh, uh, you know, it's a fact here in life today. We, when we see it in our news that um, people spend the most time doing what they believe profits them. What makes me feel good? Okay. Um, what makes the flesh feel good? That's why there is a war with the flesh and the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. It's always going to be a war in our members, but it's who we focus on, who we feed and who we give pleasure to is who's going to win. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, uh, we can see in our world that, you know, there's a lot of self-fulfillment, you know, how can I get pleasure? How can I get richer? How can I better? How can I do? And, and it's self-fulfillment. Uh, the, the idea is not there. Okay, Lord, how can I use this to minister to the world today? After all, the Lord has saved us, but not just to save us and set us on a church pew, right. on, on a church chair. Right. The Lord has saved us to make disciples. Mm -hmm. To go and, and make disciples, to go and 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 convert the sinner, and um, and so with the world and their self fulfillment, uh, we know that it can it can move into self destructive behavior uh, because we know that you know you get started in something. Uh, I don't care what addiction it is, uh, I, you know any hobby. Uh, this can be an, an addiction, you know, mm -hmm. social media, you know, things, you know, not just the alcohol and the drugs and pornography and, but there's so much in our world today that, that can distract us uh, from our thought process and from our focus on what the Lord has for us. That can be a self-destructive behavior that can uh, ruin and, and, you know, and, and, uh, move us to the side in our relationship with the Lord and get us to walk uh, in a different direction because we got our eyes on things because we want self-fulfillment right. instead of our soul and our spirit being fulfilled, being renewed and, and touched by the Lord It's Hey, how can I appease my flesh? How can I, you know, make my flesh feel good? How can I be happy? You know, and I think in, in, in if we seek out anything in this world, we're going to be of all men most miserable, the Bible says. Because there's nothing in this life that's really going to truly make you happy. Right. Because it doesn't touch your spirit. It doesn't touch your soul. Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> so, with those that, with self-destructive behavior and self-fulfillment, and uh, like I said, the world's a mess. People are a mess. They, they got a lot of baggage. Uh, but it, for us, we got to understand it's just a, it's a simple thing to offer encouragement. Just an encouraging word when they when they walk into the church or when we see them out someplace, when we finally get to go out. 
uh, and go to a restaurant or uh, we can take our mask off and go shopping, you know, and when we see them, uh, it, it, you know, it takes just something small, uh, a small word of encouragement that, that means a lot. And it can have a uh, great effect on, on someone's life. And uh, we need to look at solutions. Um, just not turn on. I'll get it. Go ahead. I got it. Okay. My battery. So my power strip wasn't turned on. Okay. So we need to look for solutions to problems. <clears throat> Short-term quick fixes won't endure. Okay. Um, for some, it's going to be a long process. Okay. Uh, for some, you know, when they come in and uh, get renewed in the Lord, get filled with the Holy Ghost, get baptized in Jesus' name, then there's a process of growth. Uh, it's just not, it's not a short-term solution. And, and, I, and in that process of growing, they're going to make mistakes. But I need to be there to encourage. I need to be there to uplift. I need to be there to instruct. And to love them. Uh, Josh McDowell uh, said this at a church one time. He said, the longer I'm in the ministry, the more I travel and see things happening, the more I have respect and appreciation for things that are long term. And when I saw that, I thought, man, I am so thankful today for the faithful saints of New Life Worship Center. Amen. I can look at saints. I can look at people today that have been in church for a long time. Yeah. They've been through a lot of stuff, but they've been in for the long haul. That's right. Uh, they've been in it, you know, even during times of discouragement, even during the time of low times and good times and times when maybe they didn't know when the next uh, time they're going to rub two quarters together or two nickels together. Uh, but they've been in it for the long haul. And uh, they knew that, that, you know, living for God was, you know, it's going to, it takes work. Right. We need to put work into this relationship. And so in uh, Philippians uh, chapter two, I believe it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Uh, <clears throat> we want to encourage that, that, you know, it's, it's going to take a change of thought process. Um, because people's minds today are so captivated by the media, so captivated by what they see because it's in the physical realm, by what they hear. And that's why I often say, be careful what you listen to. Be careful what you're looking at, okay? Uh, because it can, it can distract. It can, you know, it can captivate us to the point where it's going to draw us to a place where we don't want to be. Right. Uh, we're going to be held captive, like I said Sunday captive longer than what we want to be held captive and so there's some things that we want to encourage in people and that is number one uh, a positive attitude understand that when we come in contact with the Lord it's a positive change right. yeah. it's a it, it, it's something positive it's something good it's something mm -hmm. great and we need to talk like it is something that is positive yeah. Uh, we don't need to, you know, lay out uh, a, a list of things and say, okay, now this is what you need to be doing. No, we're not going to do that in New Life Worship Center. We're going to allow people to grow in Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and to develop in him. And through that and by that, we're going to help them with a change of attitude, a change of thought. You know, it's, it's going to take loyalty. Uh, they're going to know that, you know, now that, uh, I've come into a relationship with the Lord. I need to be loyal to him. And as I am loyal to him, I'm going to be loyal to his church. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm going to make time for him and I'm going to make time for the church. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to encourage personal growth. Uh, personal growth comes at a time when, when nobody else is there. Uh, I'm still growing. Yeah. Uh, I, my wife and I, uh, she made me make some garden boxes. <laughs> and uh we made garden boxes instead of tilling up the land and doing it she made me make garden boxes go buy soil and we planted some plants um, 
tomatoes and zucchini and cucumbers and corn and uh and those plants are growing when we're not out there okay you got that they're those plants are growing because we got them in the soil we water them and we let them grow that's the way it is with people today we've got to encourage their growth we got to encourage a personal growth that when when you don't see me in church i want you to still grow thursday friday saturday come right. see come be with us on yeah. sunday and get a good shot in the arm you know get watered down on sunday and then you know it, it's those personal times and, and setting that 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 personal time with, with the lord that that we're going to grow and as we grow in our personal time the lord will entrust in us mm -hmm. some great truths and some some acts of of faith and 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 works in the ministry i believe um also when when we look at this and i and i look at the the emergency room uh situation and then the layout um when you go to the emergency room i know I, I i know i understand you get stuck in a waiting room quite a bit right but if you would happen to go there in the ambulance and uh and, and i i had to experience that myself and uh when you get there i mean the doctors are right there they're they, they make decisive decisions right then and there boom 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 let's do this let's do this let's run this test let's get this iv let's do this this is this it's not a standoff what i think about it like one person said a paralysis by analysis we're not going to stand back and analyze everybody that comes into church. But everybody that comes into church, as far as I'm concerned, is a sinner. They need to be saved by God. And, and I want them to experience the presence of God. I want them to experience the power of God. And so I'm going to do everything I can. I'm going to worship the best I can. I'm going to pray the best I can. I'm going to preach the best I can. I'm going to do everything. I'm going to welcome them. The best I can. I'm going to encourage them the best I can. I'm going to do everything I can to help them to get into the presence of God. Okay? Right. That's taking decisive action. So, we need to encourage one another, like I said. And one of the areas that we need to be encouraged in is getting our priorities straight. Because uh, when people come into the church, uh, when they start out with a walk with the Lord, uh, it's going to be a life-changing event, and, uh, and it's going to take a process. You know, they they may miss a few things here and there, and and we can't get down on them. We 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 can't browbeat them. We right. we can't we can't do that. We got to love them into a place that they see that hey, I need to change my priorities. Okay, and uh, and if I get my priorities right then my results are going to be fruitful god is going to bless my faithfulness god's going to bless my loyalty god's going to bless you know my my right attitude towards things and god's just going to bless encouragement is 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 simplistic um brother coon uh brought up this um he, 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 he has a new um, devotion out called KISS. Keep it simple, saints. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And I feel the same way. I think we over pressure and over pressure ourselves in our walk with God. Uh, we, we, we think we got to do this, 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 and this, and you know, but if we just could just start out with baby steps mm -hmm. and just, you know, and, and, and keep it simple. You know, there are mornings I have not found myself during this time of COVID-19 being being here online. I do not go in, at, in my office in uh, upstairs at five o'clock in the morning. I do not go in there and well and travail and, and, and carry on. I, I don't find myself in that type of spirit. Uh, but I find myself in a time of, Lord, I, I need your direction today. I, I find myself simply talking to the Lord. 
you know, and, and I talk to him about the needs and situations of the church and of uh, people's lives. And uh, I, I don't feel a, a, you know, but to some, some people may think, well, that's what you need to be doing. Well, uh, I'm going to get this uh, devotion. Keep it simple, saints. We, we can't be hard on ourselves. So there, that's what it is a lot of times. We're, we're so hard on ourselves. And then we have our, our supposed circle of friends that are doubling up hard on us as well. And so uh, we, 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 need to, we need to watch that. Let me ask you what type of skeletal anatomy do you have? Here it is. The wishbones wish somebody else would do the work. Do we find ourselves at that in New Life Worship Center? Um, I wish somebody else would go pray with that person. I don't feel like going to pray with that person. I wish somebody would go take care of them. I wish somebody would call them. Well, how about if you call, pick up the phone? How about if you go and pray for that person? That's the wishbone thinking. Or the jawbone. The jawbone talk a lot, but do little else. Okay, let's be careful. The knuckle bone. The knuckle bones knock what everybody else is doing. Now, this isn't this. I got this from, from uh, this lesson. Let's not be hard on everybody. We're not going to get everything right, everything perfect. We're not perfect. Uh, New Life Worship Center is not going to be a perfect church because we don't got perfect people. Okay? I, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. <laughs> the backbones. The backbones actually do the work. Where are we at? Wishbone, jawbone, knucklebone, backbone. Where are we at in that? And so bringing this around, it all can come down to consistency. Okay? Every one of us needs to build on consistency. Uh, and it takes work. Uh, when I think of consistency, I think of a mason. When he's there uh, mixing up the mud to lay block, uh, you want that mud, that mason, to be a certain consistency. When you're pouring a sidewalk or a driveway, you want that pour to be a certain consistency, okay? A certain firmness. Because when you set blocks, and if you got a too soupy, them blocks, there's nothing that's going to hold those blocks together. And so it takes work. It takes practice. And so with that, um, building in our consistency will help us with our firmness in our walk with God. If we try to be consistent, and I, I, I say try. Don't be hard on yourself. Try. Try to build some consistencies in your life, uh, such as your prayer time, such as reading the word. Uh, such as, you know, uh, being involved with church, um, uh, other areas that uh, numerous that, that we can think of, um, consistency. And, you know, with people uh, coming into church, that's, that's probably going to be one of the, 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 the things that's going to really bother some of us the most is that they're so inconsistent. That's right. They are. They're going to be. But we need to have continual affirmation. We need to continually affirm them that, hey, they're doing good. They're doing great. Don't give up. And so with that, let me say this in closing. Encouragement is your key. Everyone say my key. My key. Encouragement is your key to helping other people succeed. If other people are going to have a, a good, true walk with God, it's going to be up to you and me. Okay? We're all in this together. Just like that saying that's going around our, our globe today. We're in this together. Okay. We're in this together as a church body. Okay? And um, we're in this to encourage, to help people succeed. Uh, the ability to encourage is and always will be much more of an art than a science. We're not going to get this out of a textbook, but we're going to learn to read people. We're going to learn, you know, 
what to say, what not to say. Okay. And if you think you said something wrong, be quick to apologize. Okay. Um, it's going to be more of an of an art than a science. Your success depends both on your sensitivity and your skill. Okay. That's why it is necessary that we build consistency in our walk with God and our relationship with him, that we are sensitive in the spirit because he's going to help our sensitivity because we're going to understand what's really bothering, what's, what's really the underlying factors in those people's lives that we are trying to minister to. Church, I believe the Lord is, is setting us up, and I, I, I believe it. The Lord is, is, has us in a place. Uh, that that he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna open doors of opportunity for us, and it's gonna be up to us as individuals to walk through by faith and to allow him to use us. And I believe the Lord is gonna open up the doors of opportunity and, and open up the doors that when we open up the church, the community center, or when we do get our own church building, I believe we're gonna have people coming into our church. Uh, with real needs and real situations. They're just not going to be innocent bystanders just checking things out and say, oh, I just thought I'd drop in today. No, they're going to be coming there because they felt a draw in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is a place that I need to be. be. This is a place that's going to uh, heal me. This is a place that's going to find my answers from my spirit and my soul. And I believe, I truly believe that today, church. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your blessings, your word tonight. Thank you, Lord God, for encouragement. I pray, God, that we would take our part, Lord, uh, God, with the abilities that you have given us, the gifts, uh, the fruits of the spirit, Lord God, the, the gift of encouragement, Lord, that we can be an encourager with someone else, God, to bless them, to strengthen them, to uh, encourage them, Lord God, in their walk with you. Yes. Bless, Lord, every yes. single yes. saint, everyone under the sound of my voice tonight. God, that you'll be with them the remainder of this week. And uh, we will be online at 10 a.m. Lord, bless in Jesus' name on Sunday. Amen. God bless you. Love you all. And uh, have a blessed rest of your week. I know the kids are out of school. Well, they probably are now anyways. But uh, it's officially over this week. Yay! God bless you all.